say this hopefully is the first of a lot of meetings where we get to know each other and to put the myth right away on the side. You can fight back. You don't have to accept this. Don't believe when anyone tells you when the deal is over. It ain't over. So we're here today to keep public housing public. Join in with me. Keep, Keep public, public housing public. We learned, as many of you have, in the last few months, <coughs> last week, about the city's plans to fundamentally change the concept of what public housing means in New York City. We learned about the city's plans to have some of the NYCHA buildings go rad. We also last week learned that with regard to Fulton Houses, how many people here uh, live in Fulton Houses? Okay, Everybody. so this really affects you directly. We learned that they plan to demolish two of the buildings. They're going to build a tower on one of the parking lots, and they're going to have three mixed income residential towers. One's going to be 14 stories, one's 25, and the third one is 28. And under RAD, our understanding is the city and NYCHA would retain ownership of the land, but they're going to lease it to private developers. All of this should be troubling not only to everyone here, but the people out the city of New York. Not just people in NYCHA, but people throughout the city. Because New York was in the leadership 80 years ago to create public housing in America. First houses on East 3rd and East 2nd on Avenue A was the first public housing in America. And it works. Second, the mayor then, who really cared for people, was LaGuardia. He wasn't a hypocrite. He cared about working and low-income people, and he pushed it. And who was the president back then? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And where did he come from? New York. So New Yorkers have an interest, directly as all of you do, but indirectly as a lot of us who don't live in public housing, but support the concept of support for low and middle income people for public housing. Yeah. And we're ready to fight to keep that in New York City. Other cities want to go demolish their buildings? That's their choice. We yeah. think that's wrong. But in New York, we never demolish the building and there's no reason to do it. All right, so what does the Housing Act of 1937 say? What it says, and I quote, <laughs> It was 82 years ago. It is hereby declared to be the policy of the United States to promote the general welfare of the nation by employing its funds to remedy the unsafe and insanitary housing conditions for families of low income in rural and urban communities. The act provided that they give public funds to public housing authorities not to private developers, but to public housing authorities. And the mandate was the public housing authorities should own and operate the public housing. 
But then you go fast forward into 2012. One of the things that Obama did wrong, in my opinion, they passed RAD. And what RAD said was they were going to convert properties. They said they would do it for the best interest of the residents. But a lot of us don't believe that anymore. So what they did is they took the public money, taxpayers' money, and they switched it from the public housing program into Section 8. But Section 8 is not what public housing was envisioned 82 years ago. And what Section 8 is about is that the majority of the public money goes to landlords and private developers. And that's part of the fight that we are facing here. And if we can win this fight here, it could have an impact not just citywide, but throughout America. So the stakes are large here. Now, we submit that no NYCHA facility should ever go either to demolishing its buildings or to RAD unless a majority of the residents in the NYCHA building agree to go that way. Right. What America is about, yeah. and we have to fight for that, is that majority rules. So if majority rules, who, why should the mayor, why should NYCHA, why should HPD, why should any of those people decide what's your future? Yes. You have to decide your future. Right. Now is that easy? No. Because my experience, most people don't know what's happening. And most people, know, even more important that some don't care, they're afraid. Yes. So what we have to do is bring people together, lawyers, organizers, but all of you, to tell people that there's strength in unity. If we come together, if they go after one, we're all there for them. We'll get lawyers. So if they try to do something to someone to punish them for coming to a meeting, there was a woman here yesterday and said, I'd like to come, but I work for the city. I've said, this is not Monday to Friday. It's not nine to five. Don't wear your uniform. You can come. And she said, well, what happens if they then fire me? We'll file a lawsuit for you, okay? So as you get to know me and the other people, and we get to know you, we'll be there if you're there. And so what we have to do with regard to the issue about demolition, for example, under Congress's law, it says that they have to take into account what's in the best interest of the residents. So we submit on that point, who should determine what's in the best interest of the residents? You don't have to be a lawyer to figure that out. The residents, you. But the only way that can happen is if you decide you're going to stand up and you're going to say, I count. It's like Jesse says, I am somebody, I, am I, count. I count, I am somebody. So we have to try to support each other. And I look around, what's nice about this group, it's mixed racially, it's mixed age. That's what we need to do because that's what New York City is supposed to be about. All of us included, everyone. And so, also what happens if they want to demolish congress said they have to make sure that demolishing the building is the only way to go are there any other alternatives to demolishing fix it. now the big thing is right they say fix it and they say they don't have the money now lewis is going to tell you about a plan that he told me a couple months ago that's exactly right and I think other cities like Seattle have done this. The corporations that have more than a thousand employees that work in New York City, why don't we tax them a percentage or two off their gross profit? That'll raise a lot of money. And then you can have the money to fix the buildings without destroying them, but it's even more subtle. What they're planning to do is put those towers in where 70% of the people in the units will not be low-income people. That's right. They're going to pay market rate 
And the question also on the rat, how do we know that, I don't even want to say his title, because <laughs> Carmen's the president, right? The person we got in the White House now, God forbid he gets reelected. What if he decides no more Section 8 money? What's going to happen then? Second, someone has to figure out, and we'll do it next week, whatever you're paying now under the public housing plan, Time says it's 660 for a one bedroom. If you go on the RAD to Section 8, your rent could be a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens then if you can't afford it. afford it this year, two years, five years later? Yeah. We know what yeah. happens there. Take down. All right, That's so right. there are serious problems here. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is nobody asks you what you want. Exactly. They, they don't even tell you what the facts are. The law says that even under RAD, well, we got to make them care. Under RAD, they have to, by Congress's mandate, have two public meetings. Have you even had a meeting yet? No! Has anyone even from the de Blasio administration come to talk about it? No! And what about even your local elected no. official? No! The Times on Monday said that they have already met with our elected officials from this area. No. no. Well, the, no, the city, the city met with the Congressman Nadler. They met with Corey the city Johnson. council person, Corey, Corey Johnson. Johnson. No. They met with yeah. the state senator, oh, Grant Holden. All of those people. And they sold us out. Well, what we have to do is confront them. We have to create, if your tenants association is no good, create a new coalition, yes, we a new group of people, yes. and then you say to your electeds, we want you to come down. We want to talk to you, and we want to know the facts. All right? So there are three things, and then I'll conclude, because us lawyers are like preachers. We go on and on and on, and we've got other speakers here, but I'll be here all day. I live in Manhattan. I used to live on 23rd. I now live on West 72nd, so I'm here. I'll oh, give you my you. number. If anybody has a problem, I don't care what time or whatever so it we is. We don't sign, we don't me. talk, we don't say I'll nothing. I'll get on right? the, on the one. Lawyer. And if necessary, if it's really late, I'll get in a cab and get down here. I'll, I'll pay your Uber. Okay. I'll pay your Uber. I don't do Uber. I don't do Uber. I support yellow cabs. Oh, okay. okay. So here's the three things. Yellow cabs, 6,036. Three just things to sit I want to leave cab. with you. There are people who think that this, we think that this is the wrong direction to go in. So there are three things I want to leave you with that you need to consider. One, you got to get the facts. No rumors, no speculation. Get the facts from HBD, NYCHA, the city, the elected officials. Record them so you have them on tape. You have them so that they have to stick to their words, but get the facts. Second, individually and collectively, hopefully a majority of the people who live here, you've got to decide whether you agree with the proposed plan or you oppose it. We oppose it. But what I say, even though this is a great turnout, we've got 50 or 60 people here. There are hundreds of people who live in this stuff. So you even if everybody here, everybody, because if you don't come to everybody like in the floor of the project, nothing I can do in, the, in, in this in this bar. Well, we if got, you got it. about three or four thousand and thousand people. That's the floor they're going in. But what I was saying in the that's beginning the is that, sir, this should be the first of many meetings. Yes. So if we got sixty now. I'd like to come back when we got 300. Then I'd like to come back when we got 700. And then I want to come back when we have 1,000. And then maybe some Sunday in the future, we have a rally and a march, and we get 10,000 people in the city to say, no, we're not going to do this. But the only way it can happen is take one step at a time and begin now. I will continue to learn the law here, and if they're not following the rules, we'll go to court. But we need your support. We have to determine, because I don't live in public housing, it's not right for me, just to, it's right, right for the mayor, to tell you what your future is. You have to figure out what your future is. Okay, thank you, God bless you. Thank you, thank you Norman. Thank you, Norman. The next speaker is Marnie Halasa. Hi, everybody. Hi.
Dex White. Um, my name is Marty Halasa. Um, I'm a lawyer, journalist, former Occupy Wall Street protester, yeah. resident of Chelsea for the past 27 years. I ran for city council in this district. And I voted for you. And, run, and running for council really opened my eyes to the devastating effects of gentrification. Uh, and the lack of substance from our elected officials to truly help their communities. Um, all talk and no action. Um, after I ran, I founded a group called Community Control of Land Use to educate and organize tenants and small businesses on issues promoting that idea. And the community, I believe, this is what I really believe, the community needs to not just have an input in land use decisions, they should have the final say. And that's something that I would like to work with you guys on. Um, I am here to say that Nice residents need to come together and organize to determine your own destiny. Done. Um, and to be clear, the groups here today fight for NYCHA, community control of land use, and not one more block, also Norman Siegel. We are all community activists. Uh, uh, all of us here are not aligned with any elected officials. We are like you, ordinary citizens that believe that housing should be a human right. Let's also not forget our rich history, where Mayor LaGuardia and FDR during the Great Dep Depression established public housing in 1934 right here in New York City. New York City was the first public authority in the nation, and unlike Mayor de Blasio, who seems to forget who we are and where we come from, we believe in keeping public housing public. That housing, its construction and maintenance is a social good and should not be privatized because everybody knows this, because when private landlord money is involved, the potential for tenant displacement grows. It's huge, it's amplified. Okay. So allow me to give you some examples that show disturbing consequences. The Government Accountability Office, a federal agency that investigates government programs, published a report in 2018 that showed that out of 26,000 RAD conversions of public housing apartments, 57% of tenants face rent hikes. For many NYCHA residents who are already vulnerable, that could easily maintain a vision. That's not like 2% or 5%, it's 57% of public housing went up, the rent went up, okay. In addition, the National, National Housing Law Project has complained to the federal agency, HUD, the Housing and Urban Development, that the new RAD owners of formerly public housing apartments engage in criminal behavior. Not a, uh, no surprise. Number one, they illegally interfere with tenants' ability to organize. So something like this you couldn't do. Number two, illegal rescreening of tenants for readmission. So that's horrible. And even worse, they carry out illegal evictions. Can you say that again? Yeah. So there, that? there's three problems with private landlords. Number one, they illegally interfere with tenants' ability to organize. Like right now, we're organizing. Yes. Number two. They illegally, uh, they illegally rescreen tenants for readmission. Yeah. So let's say Fulton Houses, you guys are relocated to another building. Yes. They renovate your apartment. You want to get back into your apartment. You go through a rescreening, and guess what? You're denied. Yes. You can't yeah. go back yeah. into your apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Listen, I'm telling you this. If I were you guys, I would not. Yes, get the facts. Yes, get the facts on what rad conversion really is. But no way. I would chain myself to my radiator. And I would chain my family to the radiator, and I ain't moving. Done. Okay. A great example of what will happen under RAD is Katrina Jones, a single mother of three who lived in public housing for a decade in Hopewell, Virginia. Katrina, whose daughter was disabled and in a wheelchair, was thrilled that her apartment was going to be repaired. Yet according to her complaint to HUD, the, not, the RAD developer refused to make accommodations for her and her family um, in convincing her to take a tenant buyout. Who's been approached to take a tenant buyout here? Has anybody been approached yet? Okay. Because I talked to people in the Chelsea Elliott houses, they've been approached to take a tenant buyout. Yeah, I've heard that. And this is like, it does also use before. Yeah. So, 
being constantly pressured, Katrina Jones took the buyout and went from paying $400 a month to $1450 a month working at Walmart, making how much is like minimum wage? Not much for her new apartment. She said to a reporter at a media site, City Lab, these people, the landlords, do not care once you move out. No. Right? No, okay. So, anyways, I wanted to, um, people just have to be very careful. I wouldn't move out. Even if I get a signed agreement, even if I know all the facts, I just wouldn't. You know, and I'm not trying to stroke fear, but it appears that public housing residents have many unanswered questions that the de Blasio administration and all the elected officials need to answer. Uh, after flyering and talking to folks for, for the past several days, we've realized that so many Fulton House residents don't even know what's going on. Or they're getting misinformation. So this is your home. This is like your sacred home. Um, other folks at the Chelsea Elliott houses have no idea. And even people at the Hudson Guild didn't know what's going on. So we wanted to call this press conference and give Fulton residents a chance to speak and be heard because your stories are not being told. And we would all hope that this district, District 3, all the elected officials, Corey Johnson, Gail Brewer, Brad Wellman, Dick Godfrey, and others would go out of their way to ensure that public housing stays public and the best interest of NYCHA residents is a priority and anything less is truly unacceptable. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Lewis? Thank you. Thank you. Listen, everybody here. They're a hard representative of this community. They all are uh, representative. Support to be listening. Like the gentleman over there, like Miguel, they support to be here and to plan what the situation they have with the, the New York City Housing Authority. I want to say something about Miguel. I want to say something about Miguel. I asked him to come to this press conference. I asked him to speak. Yeah. But I told him that this press conference is against the rad conversion. And you know what he said to me on Facebook? No thanks. Just to, just to put that just to put that in the record. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that the reason because he said for everybody represented here, Miguel and Puto House, he represented on the community. I don't know. But they they big one. They nice boy. He said he working for the only people like okay, Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I have George speak very for one minute? Then we'll be at five minutes. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Louis Scott. Louis Scott. No, no, no. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Oh, please. Uh, George is gonna speak. Okay. And then you. This, this is all about the demographics changing of the city. Okay, speak up. Speak up. This is all about demographic change. Now the fact that predominantly African American, Latinos, and Asians living in the city, now they want to change the city. And this is about people getting rid of people. If the, if the demographics was white, they would not be changing. They would not be talking about this at this moment. Permanent, you know that. So that's what it's about. It's about racism. And de Blasio is a hypocrite as well. He uses black wife to get elected. Now he want to put you on the streets. So when it comes up for re-election, any of them, Corey Johnson, remember Corey Johnson supported Michael Bloomberg. He was in the bed with Michael Bloomberg. It's the same thing happening in CUNY. The demographics have changed in CUNY. Now they're playing. Now uh, Cuomo says he doesn't have any money. So they're doing the same thing over and over again. So don't make no mistake about it. It is about racism. Thank you. Okay. Robert, Thank you for coming. We are here today to amplify the voices of NYCHA tenants so they can determine the future of public housing in New York City. Many fear retaliation from a corrupt city government led by a mayor who is clearly compromised by real estate interests. I understand that fear. I was recently violently assaulted for wanting to know why there is no money in the state budget for NYCHA. And instead of helping me, Assemblyman Jose Rivera recorded me being attacked and chased by security. But I am not afraid. I'm done. And any NYCHA tenant who is willing to speak their truth, know that I will stand with you and against state violence 
against Bill de Blasio and against Corey Johnson and the real estate developers that love them. Fight for NYCHA has been on the ground in Brooklyn in recent weeks talking to NYCHA tenants about de Blasio's plan to privatize, convert one third of public housing which also includes selling air rights on public land, building towers with 70% market rate apartments. But we are coming back. We will show up. This is not just rhetoric. We are true activists, I guess. Um, and if we work together and organize and empower each other, we can control not only the land, but our lives, our freedom, and our right to determine the future of our neighborhoods in New York City. Carmen yeah. 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 uh, Quinones is next. Carmen. Como esta mi gente? Vamos a hablar un poco español. Okay, ustedes saben por qué estamos aquí, verdad? Sí. Ok, estamos aquí porque están tratando de coger tus casas, ¿verdad que sí? Pues nosotros tenemos que ponerlo en las pilas ahora, porque ahora sí que está pasando, ¿ok? Antes lo decía, ahora lo están haciendo, ¿ok? Nosotros no tenemos que volver a pelear ¿ah? y a juntarnos, a hablarle a todo el mundo que tú conoces, que vive en public housing. Tiene que ser llamadas. Tiene que... Mira, los niños están en peligro. Los niños son los que van a sufrir. Nosotros tenemos que trabajar juntos. En todos los difíciles. En todo. Si uno, si uno tiene problemas, ve para allá. What I'm saying in Spanish is that this is a attack on people, on humanity. It's attack not only on me, it's attack on my children, on my children's children. Right. This is not funny anymore. This is so damn real. And if we don't get up here and fight, we are going to be homeless. That's where we're going. Rad is a problem. And it's going to happen. But I want you to be clear one thing. That this administration didn't do this. This came from Obama. It came from Obama. Let's not get it twisted. Let's talk about real shit here. It came from Obama. So you can go blame all y'all want, whoever you want. This came from our own people. Our own Democrats that are selling us out every day. All your elected officials. Y'all need to run for office. Each one of y'all. Y'all need to find somebody in your development that you trust. And y'all need to start running for office. You need to start running against the city councilman, the assembly, the senate, city, everything you name it, you need to run. Because let me tell you something. This is serious, man. This is an attack that I don't know how we are gonna withstand. Because our people are lazy. Our people don't come out for nothing. I can, I can come out, I can come out. Listen, I've been all over the place. I, I'm the one that went to the White House to go see the orange man. Because I wanted to prove that no matter what, I was going to take it national. I was going to take it to the highest level, which I did. But you know what? I'm still here. 
This is my home. I refuse to go anywhere. And anybody that goes against you ain't for you. Anybody that goes against you ain't for you. And you better start holding these elected officials accountable. There are elections coming up. They're only going to say what you want to hear. That's all they're going to do. Meanwhile, they're selling you down the river. Our water is contaminated. Our food contaminated. Damn, they're killing us, yo. And y'all are standing around like nothing is happening? Why aren't these people out here? We need to be shutting the street down. We need to be shutting the street down. Shutting it down. Shutting it down. The same way they came out for Trump, you need to come out for your homes. Let's do what we gotta do. Let's shut this bitch down. Cynthia's next. Cynthia's been dealing with Brad and she's gonna talk about something else called PAC. Cynthia lives in the Upper West Side. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Because yes. I talk loud. Yes. Can everybody hear her? Number one. I, yes, my name is Cynthia Tibbs. I live in the Upper West Side. This is the first development to be put into demolition. So NYCHA is taking a stand on this. First and foremost, HUD has something called 964 regulations which gives every development the right to assemble, the right to be included in decisions. From the bottom up, this development needs to first and foremost get an active TA board up and running. You have a TA president with no board. That is illegal. You cannot let him get away with this. You have to, well, he's not going to now because I'm giving everybody who wants to know today Argentina Mello's phone number. She is your representative at community engagement. She is the one that's supposed to be here holding elections to get you a board. Everybody needs to be going to her, calling her, and demanding that she comes here to hold elections. Find you a tenant you trust and let that person run for president. Elect them in. Elect a vice president, a sergeant at arms. Because once you have a full functioning board, NYCHA must engage with them. I, I gave it out. I will. I've got to look up at my phone, but I will give everybody who wants our number. I'm not leaving. I will give it to you. That's the first and foremost. Get yourself on board. Anybody that knocks at your door telling you that you have to be out in two years, you want it in writing. You don't let them tell you anything. You tell them. There is no such thing as a buyout. The only buyout that's legal that NYCHA does is downsizing. If it's one person in a three-bedroom apartment, then they will offer you 5000 to move. It's a credit towards your rent. That's not buying you out of your apartment. That's a downsize. You know exactly what's happening. Don't listen to rumors. Make sure everything you hear is in writing. Make sure you don't sign anything without reading it fully. Now since the RAD program has gone into effect, there are two organizations, Community Service Society and Legal Aid, that's been following every single development to making sure NYCHA residents' rights are protected. You need to let them know what's going on. And you cannot do that if you don't have a functioning board. Get rid of this president. Don't let him tell you he's changing bylaws. Do not listen to him. It is illegal to have one person and no other board members. Okay? 
That's illegal. It can't be done. Yes, it is. Argentina Mello is your first point of action. You must contact her. You must let her know what's happening here. Let her know that you want to get this resolved. Her phone number, 718, put it in your phones, record me. 718-707-5482. She is part of resident engagement for this development. She needs to come down here and hold an election. Argentina Mello. That what's, is your representative. What's the number again? The number? Once again, 718. And I just lost it. Hold on. 707. 707. 5482. Call her first thing tomorrow. Jamming, make sure you call, yo. For real. M E L L O. Flood the line. Hold on a second. Flood the lines because this is politics, right? And so some, what they want to do now is make sure you don't have a board. If you don't have a board, they can come and do what they want. Exactly. All right? With a board, they have to go through the board. So it's important. Es importante que llamen y dile que quieren quieren elecciones. Ahora. But keep calling. That's okay. Okay? I'm not leaving. I'm here. Hi, my name is Cynthia. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. Cynthia. Amelia, Amelia, please talk to us. I'm a new resident here. Well, I'm a resident. And you know what? My fear is that they're taking away our sense of community. They want to abolish that sense of community because the developers come in. You know how many people live in those skyscrapers? 20 years and they don't know who lives next door to them. I feel safe here in NYCHA. Like the gentleman said, there was a plan when they started NYCHA and it was so low income families could live and create their own community. Don't let them take away our sense of community. Without us, there is no community. We create the diversity of this neighborhood. Nobody brings it. You were here already. I'm a rookie. I've only been here four years. But as soon as I came, I was embraced by this community. And you don't see that anymore. We cannot afford to let them create more homelessness. They complain about it on the news, but here they are trying to create more homelessness. It doesn't even, it's a redundant issue. You don't want homelessness, but you want to get rid of all these families. Everyone I have met here has been here more than 30 years. More, more than 30 years. You're tearing apart families, neighbors that are like family, handicapped. Where are, where are they going to put these quote unquote displaced people? They're going to make promises and then the promises are going to go out the window when elections are done. De Blasio, he ran, he, gotta he go. was running gotta go with the black vote, blah, 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 got in and then stabbed us all in the right. back. If you turn around, there's a big fat knife back there. We can't let this continue. And the problem right here is, these tenants you see here are the real, the root. We've got to span out like a virus. And we've got to make people come to these rallies. You know, there's a lot of naysayers. Oh, nothing's going to happen. There is strength in numbers. That's how armies are composed of strength in numbers. If you're here, bring four more. If you're here, bring four more. There's going to be a lot of protests. I'm not going to go because it's not going to make a difference. Yes! It makes a difference. If we go from 60 to 100, even in small increments, from 60 to 120 to 240, when they see those numbers growing, the fear sets in. 
They're saying, wait a minute now. These low class, low income people have power. That's one of the things this country was founded on. We all have a voice. We all have power to make decisions for ourselves. You don't need anybody make a decision for you. You know what? No. We cannot let this happen. We were lied to on many occasions at many meetings. You all know that. Okay? They made it look, they sugarcoated, you know, the sour ball. No. You know what? And a little bit of coffee and cake is not going to make up for my nice apartment. Because I could get coffee and cake in my house. Yes. Okay? You've got to show up. If it's raining, umbrellas. Don't fail us. Don't fail, Don't fail us. I'm talking to this camera because we are up for the fight. This is the beginning of an army. There is an army of low-income, handicapped seniors. Where are these seniors going to go? There is no such thing as affordable housing. That's right. There is no such thing. You know, the handicap, seniors, our children, our children, our children's children, our families. We are a community. Don't forget that word. This is a community. It's not a bunch of crazy people talking out of the side of their head. Please, please. My mother became a member of NYCHA as a senior. She was safe. She knew she wasn't going anywhere and she died in peace. That's how it should be for all of us. Knowing that our families have a home. Yes. That they're not gonna wind up in the street. Okay? We've been told so many lies. Yes. Where's the person that perpetrated these lies today? You know what? And a lot of it is fear. I don't have to fear anybody. You don't have to fear anybody. You have rights as human beings to demand a decent place to live. And demand the truth. And you, yeah, Jackie, go ahead. <laughs> you know, we don't, we're not going anywhere. Repeat after me. We are not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. Remember to organize, organize, organize. That's the key. It has to be organization. You have to come. Please. You know, I, I go all over the place, man. And, 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 and my, you know, even my kids are like, Ma, why you keep doing this? Ma, why I keep doing this? I got 19 grandkids. I got five great grand. That's why I keep doing it. All right, this is not a joke. You gotta organize. You gotta stay on point. Recuérdense. No vengan hoy y no mañana. Tiene que tiene que estar ahí 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 porque ellos están ahí ahí ahí. When you're sleeping, they're planning. So organize, organize, organize. There's one person I gotta give a real good shout out to, and that's Norman Siegel. I know Norman Siegel for oh, 30 years. This is our 30 years. And I'm gonna tell you something. Hold on a second. I'm gonna tell you something. If one person is gonna be there for you, it'll be Norman Siegel. All right? So, please, excuse me. Please. Lo digo otra vez, lo digo otra vez. Que no sea el primero ni el último. Que salgan a la calle. Let's plan on holding meetings so that we can shut the city down. We got to get to the Bronx, the Queens, the Long Island, everywhere. But we got to get to the streets and shut it down. And most of all, hold your elected officials accountable. If they don't come here and say they with you, don't vote for them.
I just want to talk about the money. That's important. That's important. As everyone has been saying here before, you don't have to accept what de Blasio is doing here. You don't have to accept it. And I want to, I just want to repeat really quickly what Amelia said. Please hold it, everybody, please. Uh, let the let gentleman speak. speak. Let him be heard, please. Right, please. I'm going to talk about the Senora. money. We're talking money now. <laughs> important. I want to repeat what Amelia had to say about living in community. The promise of public housing was for to treat people with dignity. The people who live in NYCHA today are the only ones in New York City who know what it's like to have housing given to them as a human right. This is the dream that we all wish we all could have. The people who live in NYCHA, I want to repeat, are the only ones in this town who know what housing is like as a human right. Because that's given to them. People who, who live in public housing should live their, their should live their lives in dignity. That's what we're owed as human beings. I want to talk about the 32 billion dollars that NYCHA needs. 32 billion. 32 billion. <laughs> they like to throw that around because they say that's too much money. You don't deserve it. You know what? You do deserve it because you deserve to live in dignity. Yes. Right. You deserve to live in housing that's habitable. Yes. You should not have mold, lead paint, no. mildew, plumbing leaks, rats dancing on your stove. No, Fuck that shit. Oh. Oh. Yeah. No. You deserve housing. You, you should be able to, to raise your children in this, these apartments. People have lived here for 50 years. They deserve to live in dignity. Right. There's a lot of us. There's only one thing I've ever heard this mayor say that was the truth. Everything else I do not believe. He's only said one thing that's been truthful. He said there's a lot of money in this world, but it, it's just in the wrong hands. It's in his hands. It's in his hands. It's in his pockets. It's going into his pockets. He does deserve to be in jail. This man is an unindicted co-conspirator with Rebney. He belongs in jail. One day we're going to march on the U.S. Attorney. But first I want to talk about the money. New York City is the capital, is the financial capital of the world. All the world's money in this, is in this town. And yet the largest corporations in this city do not pay taxes. Amazon made 11 $11 billion dollars last year. Amazon made 11 billion dollars last year. How much did you pay in federal income tax? Nothing. 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 Other corporations keep their profits overseas so they don't have to report that cash as profits. Two years ago, Apple had $200 billion in cash overseas because the minute they bring it back here, it's got to get taxed. Last year, Google, Google over here had $60 billion, $60 billion in cash overseas because the minute it comes back to America, it has to be taxed. They are, ta they are evading their taxes and because they don't pay their taxes, you're getting nothing. NYCHA needs $32 billion and I can say that we can get you there. But like Carmen has said and everyone else has said, we have to come together. These corporations like to say that they are people too. That's the excuse they use in order to take control of our political system. The corporations say, we are people too. You know what? Then fucking pay your taxes. Who thinks corporations are people? Nobody! Thank you! It's all about money. It's all about money. New York City, New York City already collects a business corporation tax. It varies between 4% and 10%. But the very largest corporations, they don't have to pay anything over $10 million. And this is a violation of what is called a progressive income tax. Meaning the more money you make, 
you should be paying a higher percent of that per, that profit in terms of a tax. Get away with it. And as Norman Siegel said earlier, if we just instituted a one percent tax on the largest corporations with, for example, five hundred employees or a thousand employees here in New York City, and how many of them do we have like that? There are many. If we just took a one percent tax on those corporations. We can find the money for NYCHA. We can find the money for NYCHA. But we have to say, we want a tax system that's fair for us. And that means the people who have the money have to pay the tax. Yes. That's why we have, that's why we live this way. We, we don't live with dignity because the rich people are not paying their taxes. Yeah, get rid of Miguel too. Put him in jail. And there's other, there's other money. There's other money. Somebody said about the jails. Me. Mayor de Blasio is telling you he has no money for NYCHA. And you know what? He somehow, it was an act of God. He found $10 billion to build four new jails. Where is the $10 billion? Jails are not housing. We need, it's, we're living in a humanitarian crisis. Those $10 billion need to be given to NYCHA. The money is the wrong places. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She believes that NYCHA should not be sold. But you know what? She's not ready to go public and say that. She's not ready to fight for you. We need to say to her, you need to come out and fight for us. You need to fight with us. At, and as somebody said here before, it was Carmen, we have to hold our elected officials accountable. That includes Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yes. She needs to be on the ground here with us. Right Correct. Now, today. She, she says she fights for economic justice, then show us. Yep. Show us that you can fight for us too. We can also ask Governor Cuomo for money. New York State already has what's called a financial transaction tax. That money gets taxed on every Wall Street trade, but it immediately gets refunded because they don't collect that money. We need to start collecting money from the people who have it. These people need to be paying their taxes. And lastly, I just want to say, this is not going to be an easy fight, but it can be won as long as people turn out. It costs you nothing to show up and it can make all the difference. Just show up and in this fight, I promise you, the more people who show out, the more people will join you. Because as Norman said, people are scared. People don't know what to do. But the more courage you show, Everyone in the city will see it and they'll want to join you because we're living in a different era right now. We defeated the Queens County Democratic Party boss who, all, who was making a mess out of Queens. We got his ass out of office. Joe Crowley. We got Joe Crowley out of office. We got Christine Quinn out of office who turned her back on St. Vincent's Hospital. We got her out of office. We beat Amazon. Yep. This is a new political era where the people, if you come together, you can win it. Kick the bums out. Kick the bums out. <laughs> and I promise you. And it ain't us. It's them. It's them. The problem is them. The problem is our leadership fails us. And I just want to close by saying, the more we come out, the more we're going to grow, the more power we're going to have. And it all begins with everyone promising you're going to come out for the next one and you're going to bring your friends with you. Kick the bums out. Kick the bums out. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. There's a sign up sheet here. The Lord is just behind me. We have our sign. Please sign our sign up sheet. Thank you. Kick the bums out of office. Home, baby. Home, home, home. I got a friend. Kick the bums out. Kick the bums out. Kick the bums out. Kick the bums out.